of Rock at College and you're watching Soulful Studies Sunday where college girls come to redefine college and life success while learning simple and effective study skills. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about dealing with shame in the college classroom. Now personally for me, I never felt truly comfortable ever sharing my grade because I personally feel that the goodness or the badness of a grade is all relative to the person and sometimes when we bring up that conversation about what did you get on the exam, that can send someone into a shame spiral. So you can think that your grade was amazing, you can feel really good about it, that is until your friend Sally tells you the grade that she got and it was twice as high as yours. And this is what I wanna talk about today. But in order for me to do that accurately, in order for me to do this topic justice, I really have to explain what I mean when I talk about shame. And in my research of this topic, I came across Brene Brown, who is a thought leader and really dives deep into the research of shame. So Brene Brown defines shame as the feeling or experience a feeling we are flawed, broken, built wrongly, and therefore unworthy of belonging and unworthy of love. And she says that shame is a self injury. You are attacking yourself. And so what do we do normally when we feel attacked or we feel threatened? Well, we do one of three things. We gear up to fight, that's one. Two, we run, or three, we hide. And so the way that I see this come up, if we take a look at the word fight, what can I do to make myself better? What more can I engage in? What more can I do and act and be so that I am worthy enough of being a successful college student or worthy enough of belonging in this college classroom or belonging in this bio major or belonging as a pre-med student? So if we take a look at the second word, which is run or flight. What that looks like for a college student is avoidance. So we distract ourselves by taking naps, by watching Netflix, by going out and hanging with our friends instead of studying for the exam because we're not doing so well in the classroom or we're not understanding the reading material. So that is how we approach the, the run or the avoidance part of dealing with shame. And the third way is hiding. So I bet you've done this before. If you've ever gotten an exam back where you absolutely knew you failed, you didn't even bother looking at the grade. You kind of just stuffed it in your backpack. So we avoid it by not dealing with it, by not facing it head on and by pretending that it's not there. And so a lot of the times we see this in college students by them not reaching out to their professors because they don't want to hear what it is that their professors going to say about them and they don't want their professor to feed into what they already feel, which is that they're not smart enough to pass this class or they don't have it in them to succeed, which is what I felt as a pre-med major and one of the reasons why I never reached out for help. And so if this is truly our reality, how do we go about dealing with this shame in college, this shame around grades? So Brene Brown says that the only environment that shame cannot survive in is an environment where you're overwhelmingly throwing empathy and love at the shame situation. The first way is by truly believing and recognizing that we have done nothing wrong. We are not a mistake. We just made a mistake and we can simply say and recognize that you made that mistake and adjust. So knowing that you have done nothing wrong and you are perfect as you are. The second thing we can do is to become aware of the ego talk. That voice inside your head, that little gremlin that tells you, you're not good enough, you're not doing enough. Recognize that ego talk and change the conversation. If your best friend came to you and told you that she feels lousy about an exam, she feels dumb because she didn't get the grade that everyone else in the classroom got, you wouldn't say to her, guess what? You are dumb and that's why you got the grade. Why is your friend deserving of that compassion, that love, and that kindness from you, but you yourself are not? And then the third thing is to open up about your shame story. It opens up the dialogue for empathy. When we hide what it is that we're feeling, we prevent empathy from getting in. And so I invite you 
to engage in a discussion around the shame that you feel around your grades or the shame that you feel about anything in your life and find someone that you trust that will be open to hearing you and will provide you with that empathy that will prevent the shame from growing and thriving. I'm going to be continuing this discussion on Periscope. Every Tuesday, I bring over the topic that we discussed in the episode of Soulful Studies Sunday into the live Periscope environment where we can talk about what I discussed in the previous episode and we can engage. And I really want to open up the dialogue about shame in the classroom. And you can be in an environment where everyone else is saying, oh my goodness, I feel the same way too. So if you enjoyed this episode, I really, really would love it if you subscribe. I make videos here every other Sunday talking about study skills and all the other things that come up for us as college students. As always, thank you so much for watching. Bye. I hope you enjoyed the episode of Soulful Study Sunday you just watched. I have so many more study skills and practical college advice in the Rock at College system, a step-by-step -step blueprint for creating your own study system. Get better grades without the stress, overwhelm, and lack of social life over at rockatcollege.com.